So we're going to go ahead and try to get this turned on. I've read that there's a piece of plastic that might be in between the battery and the terminals that connect to the rest of the phone. So if it doesn't turn on, not a big deal. All right, so we probably do have the plastic in between the battery and the rest of the phone. Not a big deal at all. I guess I will read the instructions and get it taken care of. All right, so let's go ahead and try to get to this battery pack. So there's a notch on the side in the corner. In mine, it was just on the lower right hand side right here. And then we're just going to not break my brand new phone. So yeah, I'm gonna be a baby about it. Whew. All right, I had to really get up close to, to deal with it, but here's the inside. Nice big Pine 64 battery. There's, let's see, is this the modem? Um, I'll review the schematics, and you should too. A little bit of toolage right at the bottom. Definitely not a screwdriver. Um, <laughs> I go ahead and pop the battery out. So of course I was never gonna get this guy out. So let's wait for, there we go. So this is just adhesive. All right, contacts are now available to connect to the battery. Battery on, case on. This case is not aluminum. It is definitely plastic, but it fooled me, so I could have worse problems. I think it's, no, it must be my reflection. Oh, there we go, we got a light. So I actually want to go through the diagnostic testing that's included with the app already installed. I should say the software already installed on the Pine phone. And so we're just going to go through that process real quick. All right. So as you can see, not a lot of buttons because there's not a lot to do. We're just going to test each component real quick. So let's start with the motor. All right, I definitely feel it and hopefully you hear it. Motor does work. Front, left. The speaker Front, does work. Yep, definitely hear you. The RGB LED. Red, green, blue, white. Yep, check. Plug in my headphones. Headphone jack is on the top. And these are old AirPods with a three and a half millimeter jack. So definitely hear it. All right, we try, we're gonna try the earpiece. Not something I can really do on camera, but let's give it a shot. There you go. You can kind of hear it. Works perfect. This is a modem test. There's no sim in there, which is fine. This is already good enough for me. Awesome, non-registered with good signal. That's fine. The touch ring clearly works. But let's try the whole range. Oops, okay, scared me. There we go. Did that work? And then we're just gonna run what what's up to the automatic test. I have no desire to flash anything to, to anywhere, so we're not going to run that, but <laughs> once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and peel off the 
screen protector, which it does come with a screen protector, which is nice. I do have to say that for 150 bucks, it, it feels like a $300 phone at least. Um, it's not fancy. It didn't come with you know any any headphones. Didn't come with any earpods. Nothing like that. Um, but it's a nice solid phone. I like the size. I like the weight. Um, I like the hardware switches. I like the amount of information available to me considering concerning the hardware and software. So overall, that that's what I'm looking for, and I'm happy to have it. EG25 failed. Don't know what it is, but I'm gonna go Google it and find out. All right, so this is the second time I've run this test, and it basically times out and fails on the EG25 test and quick Google search slash reddit search online says that that's because there's a sim card in there and it's a modem test so I'm gonna go ahead and shut it shut this down put my sim card in it from my iPhone maybe now put it I'll put a, a Google Fi sim card in it and uh, turn it off put it in there turn it back on run the test again and let you guys know the results all right so we've removed the back cover and we're going to go through the process of installing a nano SIM card that I have from Google Fi as well as a micro SD card to use for data. It's where I'll install the operating system whenever we get around to installing the operating system. So let's get that process started. I find that it's easiest to remove the battery before you deal with any of this because the slots are very tight it's the very close to where the battery is and we'll start with the sim card so i have a nano sim card right and you can see it's what's in white and so hopefully we can pop it out yep and it is very small it's actually too small for the slot so you have to get a nano sim card adapter and here's one and the kit that I used is right here. The iSciFix Nano SIM adapter. Um, they're super cheap. You can get them on Amazon for, you know, dollars, five dollars, I think. And in this case, we're going to use the one that is a Nano SD card to, or sorry, a micro SD card. No, Nano to micro. They misspelled micro, but I don't blame them. All right, so let's get this started. So here I have my adapter, and then I have my SIM card. It can only go in there one way. Like a puzzle. And now the best part. So there are two slots where you can put the SIM card and the SD card. The SIM card goes on the bottom, the SD card goes above it. I'm gonna take the SIM card. Oh. And you will try your best just to get in there. All right, got it started off camera, so we'll stick it in the rest of the way. And there you go. So you can see the white part, which is the SIM card that actually has the data and the cryptographic information on that we care about. The little black border is the adapter. So now let's go ahead and put in the SD card. The SD card's much easier, mostly because it's on top and because it's only one piece for me. So let's go ahead and stick that in. One, two, three. There's no click or anything, so when it stops, just stop. You don't want to push until you hear something snap or anything like that. Um, there's not much retention. The case is going to keep it in there. And that's all there is to it. So now you have your SD card and your SIM card installed. Go ahead and put the battery back on and boot her up. Um, and now my SIM card is connected, call status is set to ready for call, All right? So that's good news. So let's go back and run this automated test real quick. Awesome. All okay. Happened really quick. I was getting, you know, two to five minute 
timeouts when I was doing it without a SIM card. So now that I have the SIM card in, everything's looking A-OK, -okay, which is awesome. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed the little you know, preview and post session that we had, um, getting the Pine phone turned on and the SD card installed. Um, so we'll be doing more videos like this in the future. I think the next one we're going to do is to install Ubuntu Touch onto our Pine phone to give it a, a boot and make sure that the loading process works, makes sense, and then do a kind of a, a quick little demo of Ubuntu Touch and see what kind of features it has that are working and what aren't and you know, see what you guys can look forward to when you install your own operating system on your Pine phone. So I hope you guys enjoyed and don't forget, get up, get out, and live a little. Thanks.